Yeah, what, what came up for me, Shaley, when you asked that question or, or made that point was the conversation you and I had once about um, potato chips. <laughs> and, and the potato chips being my like ultimate kryptonite, right? Like if they're there, um, I don't care what diet I'm on, what stage of like fasting I'm on, I'm eating potato chips. And so it was this real battle all the time. And you were like, hey, just enjoy the fucking potato chips. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, if I, we might have to put this as explicit lyrics now. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and ever since then, though, I've actually been much easier. Like, I've actually had moments where I'm like, hey, I don't need a potato chip right now. Yeah, it's like, it sets you free. Acceptance sets you free. It's wild. Mm -hmm. Is it unwise to leave a posh salary chasing a dream that may leave you penniless? Is it unwise to live a life without chasing your dreams? Aha. Mm. Yeah, I'd want more information. I love that question because it's interesting. And, you know, I know people who have done the same. And I think the happiest people I know are people who left something that was a sure thing, but wasn't their thing and found a way to make something that they loved uh, work for them. That was so beautiful, Nate. I love that. Are you joking? <laughs> no, that was great. It was, was awesome. Really good, Nate. It's awesome. <laughs> you, you know, I think, I, I think this comes back to your values. You know, what, what do you value? Um, if if your mental health is not in check at a in a posh job, you know, and you're not you're not feeling whole and and healthy, then it, you know, is the money is the is the big salary worth it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the 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 it's I would rephrase the question to um, a value. I think to Leslie's point, a values question is you know, I would be looking like, am I happy? Like, does this light me up? I mean, you know, I'll think back to Leslie and I did the landmark form back in 2004 and went through some landmark education and, and a couple of things that always stuck with me. One of them is that if this is not the best moment of your life, what are you doing? Because it's the only one you have. Okay, removing the past and the future, like all you have is right now. So if it ain't rocking, what's going on? to make it rock. And so that question for me would be more, does this job light me up and does it fulfill me? And am I passionate about doing it? And if it's not, then question that. And if having a really good salary and a lot of money is what's really driving you, then maybe that job is fine. And so that's actually a good segue into the original um, topics we were going to cover today about resources and so i think money there were original topics <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> um like money as a resource love emotional energy physical energy connection there are all these different parts of equations that can be left out that aren't easily when they're not easily quantifiable and so um, when you think about how you use resources in a way that generates more, what comes up? How do, you, how do you decide where to put your time and attention? How do you decide where to invest your love? Is it a decision? What is that experience like for you? I'm going to throw it down to Nate. Again, so I was just thinking that um, in the, I don't know what's best for me. Like when I try to really dole out where I'm going to put all my time or love, as you put it, um, into certain things or certain people, it doesn't always work out. I think it's best for me to just kind of be open and always be present. And, um, if I find, if I, when I come across something that I really love or I really enjoy putting my energy into that. But if I try to plan it out ahead of time, be like, I'm just going to focus on this X, Y, and Z. It'll, it'll go sideways real fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hear that. Margo being very energy sensitive. What's that like for you? Wait, we're not hearing you. Oh no. Okay. okay. Now we are. Yeah, yeah. Now okay, we are. good. Okay. Maybe I was too far away. Uh, I think all of that comes down to awareness. 
awareness of self, self-awareness, because being highly sensitive, I'm highly sensitive to everything going on around me. So it's very easy to pick up stuff and not realize. So self-awareness is key. Uh, what was the original question? Because I went blank. It, like, it like flew away like a balloon and let go of. So we're talking about how there are more resources than just money. So you've got time, attention, and energy, affection, love, like oh. all of these different things available that you can put into something to grow them. And I think it's cool to consider all of the component pieces whenever you're making a decision. So in the example of the posh energy, so he's got the money on the table and that's easy to measure. But the other things that actually might be investable for more money aren't being considered because they don't necessarily have a tag along with them. And so in making decisions or being present to the experience, deciding how to invest yourself, what's that experience like for you? Okay, yeah. That comes all back again to self-awareness. Uh, I feel that this, this world that we live in is just like you come into here like this, like this, clean slate and then your environment and everything shapes you and it's so easy to lose sight of who you are and what's real to you and what's important and to live a life based that's safe based on you know because it fulfills your immediate needs you know like staying in a posh job because you know your your needs are met financially and but are you really happy you know you have that security and you have that safety but are you happy do you know yourself is it fulfilling um I think that, yeah, I, and I think that for me, once I had that awareness too, because I'm highly spiritual. So once I had that awareness that I was source energy, so that I was, I was, I was a physical manifestation, a physical expression of source myself. And so every single thing that came through me, every desire, every feeling, every thought was also an expression of source. So that awareness of it, but also like Shaylee says, the acceptance, the complete acceptance and just following what feels good. That's, that's my experience that we've had, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Thomas and Leslie? I, I completely resonate, Margo, with what you're saying. You know, I just, at the end of the day, I just, you know, trust the the voice inside of me. I just follow my heart. And if it feels good, I invest resources into it. And, and, and then again, there's like, you know, my relationship with our children. And I will love them unconditionally no matter what, even in the moments when they're rolling their eyes at me and perhaps talking back and it doesn't feel so good, I'm still 100 million percent invested. Um, that's just something that my heart will never separate from. Hmm. And then, you know, Thomas is the financial dude. He could, he could speak to money resources for sure. Well, I, I won't, I, I'll take it more to, to the, the, you know, the how I actually get through my life and how I create my life. So, if we, if we go back to source and if we look at, you know, we were all, I believe myself that we were created and we were created in the image and likeness of, so we are all creators. So therefore I have the opportunity to create my life. That's what's here for me is the opportunity to create my life. And so how do I go about doing that? Well, for a long time, uh, I struggled greatly with that that, that ability to, to center myself. But then I thought back, you know, to the days when I was a musician and when I was recording albums and playing music and being creative, my best, greatest, greatest creative moments were when I wasn't thinking, when I was really in tune to the moment and in my, like in my own feelings with a group of people, the music we would make just worked. It would be, be jamming and everybody would know where everybody's going. It's like, it, it, there's no leader, but everybody's leading, right? And so when I look at that now and where I am today, I need, in order to create my life, I need to start my day every day with meditation and with focusing on myself and getting clear. And then I go out and the day could go completely sideways, but I've won the first part of my day because I took care of what I need in order to be my best version of myself to go forward. And that, that to me is the ultimate resource 
is being in tune with, with who I am and what I'm up to in this world. And then from there, Hey, it's, you know, let's, let's see what happens, man. Like I'll take whatever comes at me at that point and do my best to go with it. Mm -hmm. So well, I think what's really cool because this kind of ties everything that we've been talking about today together. And I love what you're saying about no leader, but everyone's leading. I think that's beautiful. And I think that's really true when we look at the entire system together. And so when I hear you talking about setting up your morning, what I'm thinking really is dropping out of your mind where there's fear and into possibility or a love-based creation or experience. And here, again, it seems to be that same idea where we're closing the gap between thought where if it's fear-based, how do I protect myself? How do I, um, it, it's taking ownership of control. So it seems like, again, there's this space where if you can close the space and feel what's there, then you're alive, you're in flow, you're moving, you're creating and everything's sort of possible and accessible is mm. my interpretation. Can, can I give this guy some concrete advice just because I was thinking about this? And if I was watching the show, I'd be like, this is all wonderful and I'll work on that, but what should I do? And I say to this guy, I've been in your situation before where I was at a job making a ton of money, but I didn't like it. I think one of the keys is to do everything everyone's been saying, be very open, but think about what you really want to do and put out some feelers. You don't have to just abandon your job tomorrow. Start talking to other people, find someone in the industry you want to be in, make a connection. I think you'll be shocked at the how certain small connections can turn into huge leaps in your career. So that's my advice. That's a great point. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you. you know what, Nate, and you reminded me like there's a Gary V talk on that, uh, where I think his first book where he, you know, in building his wine empire with his dad, he worked a day job and then all night long, he would spend his time investing in building up that company so that he could get away from his day job, right? Like there's, there is the ability to, if it's, if it's an entrepreneurial enterprise that this person wants to go off on, there is the opportunity to stay where you are and take some time and effort in the evenings. And again, it's, you know, it's that like sacrifice this in order to get this and, and be passionate about it. And still to Nate's point, whether the, whether it's an entrepreneurial thing or it's the feeler thing, it's possible to transition yourself. You don't have to cut the tie, you know, and then, hey, now what? I, I can't eat next week. That's not probably a good thing. I like, I think that's a really great point and add. And I'd like to throw in a third option. And so I coach people through transition. And if that was my client, the way that I would have them start is actually write love letters to the position that they're currently in to find and engage. So that same idea of being so immersed in details that there isn't room for space to really like invest in what's there and to take it, it's like you light from within and then you are flying this flag that's like I want to be lit and then everything that would make you lit finds it and goes so I would start say like even start where you are what do you love about where you're currently at what could you appreciate where could you expand there um, and then have the conversations and open to the possibilities and then with what Thomas is saying I think that's huge too. And I think it's demonstrative of faith or confidence in self or possibility or belief or hope that there's something that could be different, that if you put in the time, it can change, which I think is a huge, huge necessity for allowing things to change. Mm -hmm. It's the baking of the cookie. Yeah. Please hang up and try again. I have a question for Nate. Uh-oh. I am so curious. How is the simulation different or the same to the matrix? Uh, well, I hope there's not a bunch of, uh, I hope we're not all in pods being farmed <laughs> for body heat, which seems like an inefficient power source, frankly. I, I mean, I just assume that, oh, that we could go so far off the rails. But um, there was, a, we'll have to talk about it offline, but I was just thinking about, uh, you know, how technology has advanced so much. And I always ask my friends, like, do you think if we could recreate the the Big Bang or whatever it is, do you think we would do it to simulate it? And they always go, yeah, of course we would. We're curious. It's like, yeah. And I just, I think it's, um, I'd be surprised if we're the first people to come up with that idea. I think we're probably way down from base reality. 
So I think it's very different from the Matrix. I don't know if people are evil overlords. I think uh, maybe someone just flipped the switch a million years ago. Mm. And I, I wasn't being facetious. I was asking in all honesty, because I have a group of men that I connect with all the time. And, you know, we talk about the Matrix and we talk about, you know, what's real and what's unreal or what seems real. So I was just curious how closely those were related or not. So thank you. Um, Absolutely. I will say that and part of my ascension or whatever unfolding or falling apart or whatever the hell it was, there was a point where I was so sold on the simulation and not only that, but it was a one player game that I remember sitting on the bay, just sobbing hysterically. Cause I was like, this is so sad. Cause I was like, I could Google it, but then it would be whatever I expected to find. <laughs> it was like this terrible dead end where I was like, oh, this sucks. I feel so alone. Like, so if, if you are playing in the simulation mind space, like find a version of it that's helpful and inspiring because there are oh, some yeah. strands in it that don't feel good at all. Yeah, this is a multiplayer. <laughs> this isn't just you sitting in the bay weeping, I hope. <laughs> oh, I like to tell my, I like to tell people that it's like a video game and you, you know how you choose your character in the game and it has all these characteristics that you want to beat that whatever it is you're doing. It's like the same thing, you know, there's like another higher aspect there that's choosing you with all these characteristics and that environment and everything and that it's kind of like guiding you that that energy that's how i like to look at it like that's the way i i translate it in that that matrix type thought and that, mm. that makes it a lot more fun when something challenging shows up in your hand because then whenever you take like the hard route it's like exciting because you're like oh you know if i do this i get that and it's mm -hmm. yeah like you're getting XP points. Yeah. Like XP points in a game, you know? Like, yeah, and then you level up. I yeah. think about that all the time, and I'm always like looking at something, and I'm like, why did I get all these skill points in reading speed and dump nothing into math? What was I thinking at this creation screen? <laughs> I did a terrible job. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, again, thank you so much for appearing on The Shaley Show. It's been mm -hmm. an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. So nice to connect. Thank you. Bye.